This video is sponsored by KH Camera. I've recently had the chance to use the GFX 102 at weddings and multiple couple sessions. Since my time with the GFX 102, I've perfected how I like to set it up for these shooting situations. Now, not a lot of people are shooting medium format for weddings, so let's look at how I like to set up my GFX 102 for weddings and portrait sessions. Since I mainly shoot weddings, we're gonna be focusing on stills, but again, my approach to the GFX 102 is very different since generally a medium format camera is being used in the studio, whereas I'm trying to use it for weddings. If you're doing anything that lends for quicker speeds, this is gonna help you out with setting up your GFX 102. Let's go ahead and jump into our menu by hitting menu OK. And generally you'll start out in your image quality settings. This is how you're gonna set up how your image quality looks. Usually I'm shooting in raw. And for my raw recording, we're gonna do compressed. Now the main reason I'm doing this is because the files are huge, as you can imagine. I do use 256 gig cards, but it's a wedding and I'm gonna be shooting thousands of photos. I've come to find that compressed is actually the best as far as quality. You're not losing much, but you're also getting good space. With a 256 gig card, I'm getting like 2,500 photos, which is more than enough for a wedding. You do also have options for lossless and uncompressed as well. I've tried lossless before and I don't, something about it didn't look right to me. So I usually stick with compressed. Also inside of this option is where you can switch over to going to 16 bit if you'd like to, but you'd have to do full raw for that. And those files are massive. I would only suggest it for projects that really need it and or studio work, but not for weddings. After that, we can pick our film simulation. Personally, I love Classic Chrome. I've always used it. It's what I use for absolutely everything. We have our grain effect and color chrome effect, which generally I'll keep these off. Again, these mainly affect your JPEGs. Now, if I'm shooting in JPEG, I do like to add a little bit of grain. We have the smooth skin effect, which is actually really kind of nice. I usually will turn that on low again if I'm shooting in JPEG. Dynamic range, I'll keep on 100. And then white balance, I'll shoot in auto white balance. Unless my scenes look bad in camera, then I will switch to white balance. For my tone curve, I like minus one on the highlights, minus two on the shadows. Sharpness is plus two, but again, these are mainly affecting our JPEGs. Same with our high ISO noise reduction. This is a JPEG option mainly. So outside of that, most of these things I'm gonna keep the same way they are. I am gonna change my color space to sRGB. I don't like to do it in RGB, but you can change that if you'd like to. And now we can go on to our autofocus and manual focus. Autofocus mode, I tend to use single point. However, during a wedding day, you do tend to switch this. If I am switching this, I actually put it onto a button, which we'll talk about my button setup a little bit later. My zone custom setting, I generally will keep that the way it is. The same with my autofocus mode all setting. For my AFC custom settings, I generally like number two or number three. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna switch it back to three. Going down further, my number of points, I will generally change this to 117, mainly because it makes it much easier for me to move my focus point. Again, if you know the way I shoot, I shoot on single point focus and I don't use a lot of face auto detect very often. All the rest of these settings, I'll usually leave them the way they are out of box. And my face auto detection is set to a button so I can quickly turn it off and on if I need to. Your subject detection is where you can get other things like planes and cats and dogs, so on and so forth. With manual focus assist, I like peak. I'll generally switch this to peak red high, so I get red outlines on my subject to know that they're in focus. The rest of these settings, I leave them the way they are out of the box, except for the touchscreen mode. I generally don't like that. 
That's a personal choice, however. If you do like to be able to touch the screen and autofocus that way, you want to turn that on. Now, I have mine turned to off, but that's mainly for my stills. For movies, you can turn that on. In this next section, we have things like self-timer, bracketing, shooting, film simulation, bracketing, and a lot of this stuff I don't use most of the time. Just know this is where you find it. You can see on the left there, you have three different areas. Here's my shutter type. I generally will always use the mechanical shutter. Electronic shutter I'll use sometimes, but I just like the mechanical shutter better. There's no point in changing that. I have my flicker reduction set to the first frame. I notice the camera works a lot harder if you're having flicker reduction on every frame. So for sake of speed on a wedding day, I like to set this to first frame. Here's my ISO, then my image stabilization. Generally, I'll change that to shooting only. And now the 35 mil format mode, this is actually a setting that I use pretty often depending on how I shoot. So I've shot a wedding with dual GFX 100 twos. And on that, I did not shoot in 35 mil mode because I had two of the same bodies. However, if I'm shooting with an X-T5 and the GFX 102, that's when I'll change my 102 to the 35 mil mode. By doing this, I don't have to crop all my photos. And yes, I am losing a little bit of resolution, but I mean, it's 102 megapixels. You're not losing that much. Also, one thing I found that in 35 mil mode, the Fujifilm standard lenses reach a little bit further. So for instance, the 55 mil, which is more like a 45 full frame equivalent, turns more into a 50 mil full frame equivalent when in 35 mode. So pretty much what I'll do is I'll turn this on so I don't have to crop and then use it like it's a full frame. So the 55 mil on my GFX and then my X-T5 is shooting with a normal like 23. So full frame equivalent, that's a 35 and a 50. So again, this is personal choice. Whenever I do it, it depends on which cameras I'm shooting with. The last session I did, I was shooting with the X-T5 and also the GFX. I'll leave a link for that session up above if you want to check it out. But that's why currently I'm on 35 mil mode. Let's take a quick moment to shout out this video sponsor, KH Camera. Now, if you're anything like me, before you upgrade to a new camera, you like to sell some of your old gear to make up for that purchase. And KH Camera is one of the best ways to do this. At KH Camera, it's easy to buy great quality used gear and sell your own gear. All gear that they receive is painstakingly looked after and made sure that it's up to quality. And on their site, they'll tell you exactly the condition of the gear that you're buying. I personally bought a lens myself for one of my film cameras and I was absolutely surprised at the actual quality of the lens. Honestly, it looked new or maybe even open boxed. You're not gonna find quality like this anywhere else. So if you're looking to save yourself some money with some great quality used gear and or sell your gear to upgrade to something different, KH Camera is gonna be the place to do it. With their wide selection of film and also digital cameras, you're gonna find anything you want for hobbies and or your business. Make sure to check the link in the description below for 5% off of your purchase or 5% towards selling gear. Let's go ahead and get back into these settings. My flash settings, I usually don't change too much. However, I do have a button set for TTL lock for off-camera flash. This is pretty important when it comes to your wedding day. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now under the gear icon, this is gonna be the most important settings. Let's take a look at our user settings. This is where you change your date and time. You can check stuff like your battery age, reset your settings. Sound setup. Please go ahead and turn off the autofocus beep. As a wedding photographer, you do not want that on. I generally turn off most of the sounds as well because there is a sound the camera makes for the electronic shutter, but if you want just a nice, quiet electronic shutter, you're gonna need to turn that off as well. For my screen setup, we have our view mode settings. Generally, I'm always using the eye sensor because I do look through the viewfinder very often. 
My EVF brightness, I put plus one. And other than that, it's about the same for the rest of the settings. I do like the image display, so I set that for 0.5 seconds. Just so I can see a photo for, you know, 0.5 seconds after I take it. I like to do my preview exposure white balance. That's, again, one of the big pluses of mirrorless cameras. However, when you get to the reception, you'll want to come in and turn this to off. That way you can actually see through your viewfinder. Go ahead and turn on your electronic level. I'll usually have that set to 2D and also my framing guide. This way I can have my photos straight. If you know anything about the way I like to shoot, I absolutely hate crooked backgrounds and Dutch tilts. So I always have my electronic level on in the framing guide. Most of these settings stay the same. And now we're in our button dial settings. This is where I make the largest changes. So let's jump into the function setting. So at the top of the GFX, you have these three buttons here, and they're all pretty much customizable. It's actually really awesome. Now these buttons give you the most versatility so I highly recommend taking your time and setting these up to what will make the most sense for you. Now, as a wedding photographer, there's things I need to get to very quickly. So for the left button, I like to set up my face auto detect. This way I can quickly turn it off and on. Now, again, at weddings, I don't like face auto detect because it will just go for anybody's face and sometimes not the couple. And that's a huge no, no. However, if you're just taking photos with the bride or groom alone or the couple together, then you can turn on your face autofocus really quickly and it's pretty awesome. Next to that, I have my white balance. The reason I put this here, again, sometimes your camera has no idea what to do with the white balance when it's on auto white balance. So if your photo's looking too blue in camera, I can quickly change it here. Or if you're inside and have ugly tungsten lighting, you can quickly switch it right here. And then next to that, I have my autofocus mode. So this is from changing from single point to zone to all, anything of that sort. Again, when my couple do their first kiss and they're walking back towards me, I switch to zone so I can easily and quickly get to that right here at the top. This button down here is our sub menu for the screen. I haven't changed that. I might change it to something else, but this just changes the display on your screen. We have our performance mode, which I have on the button on the front by my finger here. And under that, I have my TTL lock. Now, again, this option only works when you have a camera with a flash on it. And also that flash is mastered to other flashes. So generally when I'm doing my flash, I use my Godox V862 on camera. And then I have two of those off camera as well. And so by turning on TTL lock, I can use all of the flashes in manual and it won't have to think. I don't know what it is about not having the TTL lock on, but basically the flashes have to think about what they're doing. Whereas if I turn on that TTL lock, then they just go ahead and flash. This is very important for me, which is why I have it on my finger right here on the front. It's super easy to get to. All my touchscreen options, I leave them how they are. I don't like using the touchscreen. I'm always scared I'm going to swipe it with my nose. Luckily on the GFX 102, there's a lot of space between the viewfinder and the screen. So your nose is not really going to hit it, but it's been a habit of mine for a long time, so I don't do that. Most of the rest of these buttons, I leave them the same way they are. So it's really the top three here and the front two that are super customized for me. We have our command dial setting. This is how you can just make sure what your command dial does. Generally out of the box, it's pretty much good to go. Command dial operation, if you want to have it turn different directions. And then the biggest and most important options are your shoot without lens and shoot without card. Turn shoot without lens on if you would like to be able to adapt other lenses to your camera because anytime you adapt a lens to the camera, it has no idea what it is and it'll tell you you don't have a lens on your camera. So you have to turn that on if you want to shoot with adapted lenses. And then shoot without card, please God, turn that off. 
You don't ever want to go to a session, think that you're shooting the session, and then find out you had no SD cards in your camera. With shoot without card on, that's what will happen to you. So turn that off. By turning it off, you'll see here, if I try to even autofocus, it'll immediately tell me that I don't have SD cards. So you'll know immediately you don't have any SD cards and you won't shoot a session without SD cards by accident. Here's our focus ring. You can switch which direction it moves in. And the rest of these settings, I leave the same. For your auto power off, turn that off. I don't like my camera turning off by itself. Again, on a wedding day, if you have your camera on and it's just kind of on and you forget it, and then something comes up and you go to shoot it and you can't, that's a big issue. And then generally my performance, I'm shooting in boost. I like to do autofocus boost. I just, the GFX system in the past has been a little slow, but the 102 is very, very fast. And I just want to focus on that autofocus because you're going to need that on wedding days. Also for your auto power off temperature, turn that to high. Basically what this is doing is that when the camera starts getting hot, it's going to turn itself off automatically. If this is set to standard, it'll more quickly say, hey, I'm too hot, can't do it. Whereas if it's set to high, it'll go for longer before it starts saying that it can't do it no more. However, keep in mind that, you know, you're running your camera pretty hot. Now, personally, I haven't had any issues with this yet, and I've shot whole weddings, but we'll see what happens over the summer. I haven't shot any summer weddings yet. After that, everything else is fine to go. And now you have your camera set up for stills for weddings. Now, we'll take a quick look at movie. However, I don't really shoot too many films or short clips at my weddings. But generally, a lot of this stuff is set up the same. We're not going to go over movie formats. That's very specific for anyone who knows how to do film. But a lot of times, I'll keep it at 4K 59.9 or 29.9. This way, at a wedding day, I can quickly switch over to movie and take a quick clip while I'm also shooting. Aside from that, for my IQ, everything is pretty much the same. I love classic chrome. If I'm not shooting an F-Log, classic chrome is what it is. Dynamic range is the same, same tone curve. I'll usually do sharpness plus one. And this way I can have a very similar look in my shoots between my photos and also the video straight out of camera. So now I can quickly go between stills, swap the button, and just kind of go back and forth. And it's really not that big of a deal. Now, if you'd like me to make a video more dedicated to the video side of the GFX, please let me know. But generally, I'm just shooting 4K, 16x9, and maybe 59.9, 60 FPS. Nothing too serious. Again, I'm mainly shooting stills at weddings. Now that your GFX 102 is all set up, you're ready to go and handle weddings. And if you want to see me using it at weddings and sessions, definitely check out this playlist 